It runs on gas, it runs on electricity, and it goes just about anywhere. Is the Grand Cherokee 4xe the most versatile Jeep ever? Let's find out. SUVs and crossovers are popular these days because they're practical and useful. Unfortunately, most get lousy gas mileage. Don't be blue about efficiency. These accents mean this Jeep Grand Cherokee has the 4xe powertrain. In other words, a plug-in hybrid. And the system is not an afterthought. This generation was designed to package the extra electrification. The EPA rates the all-electric range of the Grand Cherokee 4xe at 25 miles. Let's be pessimistic and peg it at 20. Plug it in every night and you get 7,300 miles of all-electric driving annually. And gasoline is a lot more expensive than electricity. However, the 4xe powertrain is not inexpensive. The upcharge over the V6 is nearly $9,000. It's better compared to the outgoing V8 powertrain that 4xe effectively replaces, and there the difference is closer to four grand. Dipped in silver Zenith paint, this tester has option packages like the Luxury Tech Group, Advanced Pro Tech 3 with night vision, and a screen so the co-pilot can be useful. This Overland model MSRP is for $75,300 with destination. Federal and state tax incentives may soften that pricing. Until it offers a fully electric vehicle, this roomy Grand Cherokee is the most efficient Jeep for hauling families to remote locations. It starts with a 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder combined with two electric motors. The 134-horse propulsion unit is integrated into the transmission. In total, there's 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. On startup, There's little to no sound, and normally I rev the engine so you can hear the exhaust note. <laughs> that won't happen here, even with the Turbo 4 running. There's some interesting packaging here. The front axle bisects the oil pan, allowing engineers to drop the engine down for a lower center of gravity. Uh, that's a new one on me. There are two waterproof batteries, one on either side of the drive shaft for a total of 17 kilowatt hours. They're mounted here, protected by a series of skid plates. The gearbox is an eight speed. It's easy to shift past reverse if you're in a hurry doing a three point turn. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Manual control is done with these small steering wheel paddles. This says a lot about how capable this machine is. The $1,100 off-road group replaces Quadra Track 2 with Quadra Drive 2 that adds a rear electronic limited slip differential to the two-speed transfer case. Quadra Lift air suspension that's standard on all but the base 4xe hikes the 8.4 inches of ground clearance to 10.9. <laughs> that should get the kids to daycare. Of course, there are drive modes that cover any situation the Grand Cherokee might find itself in. And there's loads of information to help drivers cover tough terrain. Finally, 4xe offers some choice on what powers the vehicle when. Hybrid is sort of an automatic mode. Force it into using the battery pack first, or choose the gas side and use up the 19-gallon gas tank. 72 liters for everybody else on planet Earth. Why force the engine on? Well, if you plan on going off-roading, travel to the trailhead using the Turbo 4, and then once you get off pavement, you can travel on electricity. Using the electric motors, there's no sound. Roll down the windows. Listen to the tires. Listen to the birds chirp. Experience nature. That's off-roading at its best. Electrification works really well here. Consider that the ultra-capable Trailhawk is only available with the 4xe powertrain now. This is just light off-roading, but torque-rich electric motors are ideal for scampering up steep grades and climbing over boulders. Hard use will drop the electric range significantly, though. But the gas engine is always there to back you up. All the gauges come in handy on the trail, same with the camera angles. 
Jeep claims a high percentage of its owners take their rigs off-road, and I believe that, though I think it's probably more Wrangler than Grand Cherokee. Still, this does have some off-road chops, and I know firsthand. At the 2022 Mudfest SUV of the Year competition held by the Northwest Automotive Press Association, Grand Cherokee 4xE dominated the competition, winning in the electrified segment, mid and full-sized SUV category, and took home the overall winner trophy. It seldom ever breathes hard, even on the extreme course. It can take on 24 inches or 61 centimeters of water fording, not all hybrids are low-performance sloth mobiles. A shout out to Carmigo for sponsoring Driven Car Reviews. If you need to sell your car, truck, or SUV quickly and securely, Carmigo has a nationwide network of dealers so you get the best price for your vehicle. It's very easy, that's the whole point. Just click on the link in the video description, enter some information, upload some photos of your car, and then name the price that you want. Now, if you don't sell, you pay nothing. If you do, normally it's a $350 fee, but by clicking on that link in the video description, you get $50 off. And Carmigo does all of the heavy lifting, all of the paperwork, and you get paid right away. You don't have to deal with strangers. You don't have to take out ads. Give Carmigo a try. Let's move on to where Grand Cherokee will spend most of its time. Talk about a win-win. This is more fuel efficient than the V6 and more powerful than the V8. Uh, yeah, I know you'll probably miss that growl, but this will do the zero to 60 dash in six seconds. The eight took a second longer. Maximum velocity happens with both the electric and gas side working together. Now, if you're in pure EV mode and nail the throttle, the Turbo 4 will kick on because essentially you've asked it to. Left to its own devices in hybrid mode, the 4xE system will maximize efficiency. The pack can be charged by the engine, but there's no efficiency advantage there. It's best to plug it in. As far as I can tell, I'm seeing about 22 miles of all electric range in the real world. Uh, the eight speed transmission is very smooth. Same with the transition from gas to electric, though occasionally at slow speeds, there is a little bit of stumble, something to check on your test drive. Over the years, Grand Cherokee has developed a reputation for being very comfortable. This is the best one yet. It's quiet. At speed, there's little to no wind noise. With Overland standard semi-active dampers, it's a great road tripper. On pavements, the Grand Cherokee feels more like a crossover than a rugged SUV. It's very easy to drive, goes down the road without micro corrections, feels very much like the Land Rover Defender, which is very, very good. Compared to a pure electric vehicle, plug-in hybrids are more complex and there's engine maintenance, but there's no range anxiety here. If your daily driving is seldom more than 25 miles, or you can charge at work, it keeps a lot of wear and tear off the turbo four-cylinder. Fuel efficiency is kind of what you make it. If you charge up every night, you can easily cut your gas use in half. And even if you don't charge up, this is pretty efficient. The EPA rates the average at 23 miles per gallon, but really, why would you not charge up? <laughs> you paid for the system. The price spread between the 4xE and the V6 powertrains probably won't be recouped, but the capability and power are worth something. 4xE cannot use DC fast charge stations. Using level two, it fully juices in around two hours. Standard 120 voltage, uh, 12 hours. Uh, remember, the gas engine always saves your butt, so owners can skip the expense of installing level two. I charge my plug-in hybrids on 120, running 240 into my cave of a garage is cost prohibitive. 
There's no loss of space up front, and the Overland model looks pretty darn nice. It's trimmed out with high quality materials, there's soft ambient lighting, yards of cut and sewn material, even the glove box is lined with mouse fur. Uh, look low, and there are some budget touches. The shiny black plastic is easily scratched. Uh, Jeep is not the only offender. As equipped, the seats are heated, vented, and offer up a mild massage. They're extremely adjustable. The wheel is toasty too. You can see the forest and the trees. Storage is solid with enough places to stash things. A decent trail snack will stow here. The Uconnect user interface is solid, though I do find the touch response to be on the average side, and there are a lot of small icons, says the guy that's overdue for a trip to the optometrist. For off-roading, the Navi system has a breadcrumb feature. Often used controls have hard buttons. Thank you, Jeep. The phone charge pad doesn't seem to like my iPhone 13 Pro. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wireless. Audiophiles, you'll want the 19-speaker, 950-watt Macintosh system. The uncolored reference quality sound might be the tiebreaker if you're choosing between vehicles. Hey, compared to the V6 model, how's the room back there? The 4xe has all those motors, batteries, and electronics to package. They're exactly the same. Really? Yeah. Kudos to the engineers. It's spacious back here. We're both five foot nine and head, knee, leg, and foot room all generous. The cushions are high enough so that thigh support is excellent. There are door pockets. Those are kind of small, uh, but built-in sunshades. Always nice to have those. Pockets on both seat backs, bag hooks. There's dual zone climate control, heated seats. This is the swanky version. And you can power or charge nearly anything back here. There is a little bit of a center spine. It's not too intrusive. The only thing really missing is fore and aft travel to max out leg or cargo room. But this is a roomy space. If three adults want to view the wilderness from back here, they'll be comfortable. Generation 5 is a good-looking SUV. Uh, that said, I truly love the outgoing design and prefer the look of the three-row Grand Cherokee L. The D-pillar on the two-row model is a bit fussy to my eye. It can be camouflaged a bit by different roof colors. This black painted top here is a $775 option. Other than this, it's easy to spot a 4xe because of the azure detailing, since everyone knows that electricity is blue, right? Unlike some vehicles that make the transition from gas only to plug-in hybrid, the Grand Cherokee 4xe does not lose any cargo space. That's a win. That means storage here is exactly the same as any Grand Cherokee. There's an included travel charge cord. Smaller drivers will appreciate the power tailgate location. There are no remote releases, and the trunk is too deep and high to reach from the bumper. Considering the outdoorsy positioning of Jeep, it's disappointing that there's no pass-through or 40-20-40 split. In max cargo mode, there's nearly 71 cubic feet to fill up with camping gear. Pretty roomy. Since this is the same volume as the standard Grand Cherokee, here's file footage with the V6 powertrain. With all five seating positions usable, there's almost 38 cubes of storage. Costco TP packs are about the same size as a carry-on suitcase, so each passenger could take two. Let's close this out with red light, green light. Green light. Plug it in every night and the 4xe's efficiency is better than most small crossovers. Not just a fuel sipper, it's quicker than the old V8 model. Electrification with no range anxiety improves the off-road experience. And there's the comfort, drivability, and style that's common to all Grand Cherokees. Yellow light? Fueling will be less expensive. Uh, don't expect to recoup all your costs. Check for some slight stumbling at low speeds on an otherwise smooth powertrain. I prefer the design of the three-row model. 4xe can't be had in that version, at least for now. Red light. The 4xe powertrain is a significant jump in price. Unlike pure electrics, plug-in hybrids need engine maintenance. And speaking of, the Jeep brand is not among the top five brands when it comes to rated reliability. The 4xe powertrain can be had in Wrangler too, a real advantage over Ford Bronco, but the system truly shines in the family-oriented Jeep. 
Grand Cherokee has always been a guilty pleasure of mine. It looks good, it's comfortable, it's easy to drive, and yet it goes anywhere. But the lack of efficiency, ugh. So this, this is a game changer. It's more powerful, it's more efficient. If you can afford the upcharge from the V6, this is definitely the way to go. BMW, Lincoln, Range Rover, Volvo, and others have plug-in hybrids too, so there's choice. The Jeep Grand Cherokee is the kind of vehicle that buyers want these days. With the 4xe powertrain, it's firing on all cylinders, and then some. I love doing these reviews, even though they take a lot of time to do right. I get to look at all sorts of new technology to see how well it works. It's a responsibility I don't take lightly. And ever since I've been a kid, I've always been a photographer, so I get to play with cameras too. I'm always looking for new locations and backgrounds. <laughs> Have to say, I'm not always welcome. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, what organization are you with? Uh, I am with uh, me. I've been kicked out of many places, all over the country, actually. Uh, best to ask for forgiveness, uh, not permission. Give it up, everybody, for Martin Campbell. He drives while I shoot running footage. Um, I use Martin because, well, he's a great guy, and too, he's virtually my twin. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Also, he shoots the video thumbnails. I've got to share that he wanted to get some iPhone footage when we are doing the off-road stuff. Okay, personally, I think you're nuts. I'm not sure I'd put a new 14 Pro in harm's way, but Martin is made of money, apparently. Uh, I buy used GoPro Hero 7s specifically. I get them off of eBay, and I do this for a number of reasons, partly because they're cheap and partly because they have unique qualities that the new GoPros don't have. Before I go, let's talk plug-in hybrids. I'm very familiar with them because there are two in my household. My wife's Chevrolet Volt, which goes about 45 miles on a charge, and my Cadillac ELR goes about 30 because it's oriented more towards performance. Now, she drives hers a lot more than I drive mine because I'm always behind the wheel of somebody else's vehicle. And typically, annually, she buys two tanks of gas. And I've gotten to the point where I only put half tanks in mine because I don't want the fuel to age out. They really work if you plug them in every night. Yes, they are more complex because they have two powertrains and a gas engine to maintain, but they really work for some people. Know your needs. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to this channel and click notifications. Some of you have wanted to send me money. Uh, who am I to deny you? Um, you can do that using Super Thanks or Venmo. Um, you can follow me on social media, and if you have a question, leave it in the comments, okay? That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.